Well, welcome back to Getting to Know God Intimately. I think I'll just put it that way right away. My name is Jim Caseman, the president and founder of the Association of Faith Church's Ministers, and I'm honored to bring the word to you today. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of our partners and friends who support this ministry with their prayers and finances. We've been able to take the word of faith to the world through your faithfulness, and we really appreciate it. And we're talking about getting to know God intimately. In our last session then, in session 10, we, uh, we uh, described the Mosaic Covenant, uh, but then there's still a, a couple of items that I want to discuss at the beginning of this session uh, of, uh, of 10, and uh, of session 11, rather. And that is the, the Mosaic Covenant in its entirety governs three areas of, of the lives of the Israelites. First of all, it was the moral law. The commandments governed their personal lives, particularly as they related to God, Exodus 20, verse 1 to 26. And then there's a the civil law. The judgments governed their social and uh, governed their, their social lives, particularly as they related one to another, Exodus 21, verse 1 to 24, and then chapter uh, uh, and Exodus 21 and, and the first verse all the way through chapter 24 and the 11th verse. Then we have the ceremonial law. These ordinances governed their religious lives so that the people would know how to approach God on the terms that he dictates. Exodus 24, 12, uh, verses 12 through 31 and then chapter uh, um, 18. And then... Uh, or I'm rather Exodus 24 verse 12 through chapter 31 and verse 18. And then God's covenant promise to Abraham and Genesis were reaffirmed through Moses. Now, these three areas that governed their lives, it was the civil ceremonial, the cer uh, civil ceremonial, and of course the uh, moral. The civil had to do with uh, the laws like speed limits and all that stuff, which I'm sure the donkeys didn't have, but that's how it'd be in our society. And then it was the ceremonial. It was all of the five offerings and the, uh, the feasts of, uh, of, uh, of Israel and all of that. And then it was the moral law, the Ten Commandments. Now, um, so that would be the Mosaic law. And then we get over to the Palestinian covenant and Deuteronomy 29, verse 10 through 15 and Deuteronomy 30, verse 1 to 20. Now, the Palestinian covenant concerns Palestine and is the third of the theocratic, co theocratic covenants and the Palestinian covenant has two aspects. The legal aspects, first of all, are immediate and conditional, Deuteronomy 27 through 29. Secondly, the grace aspects, which are future and unconditional, Deuteronomy 31 to 9. The enjoyment of the immediate blessings are introduced by the conditional formula. If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Sadly, Israel did not meet the condition of obedience and is still experiencing God's curses and punishment for their disobedience. Now, the unconditional grace aspects of the Palestinian covenant have yet to be realized. God will regather the scattered people of Israel and establish them in the land he has promised unconditionally to give them through the seed of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So that is still to come uh, through Jesus. And, of course, they're all fulfilled through Jesus. And then we have the covenant with David. 2 Samuel 7, verse 4 to 17. The covenant with David is the fourth of the theocratic covenants. And in this covenant, God promised David three things. One, a land forever. 2 Samuel 7, verse 10. An unending dynasty. Secondly, an unending dynasty. A succession of rulers or members of the same family. 2 Samuel 7, 11 to 16. Third, an everlasting kingdom. 2 Samuel 7, verse 13 and verse 16. Now, the birth of Solomon, David's son, who is to succeed him, is predicted in 2 Samuel 7, verse 12. And his particular role is to establish the throne of the kingdom of David forever. 2 Samuel 7, verse 13 and Isaiah 9 and verse 7. Now, this covenant with David... David reaffirms what God promised Abraham, promised Abraham, which would be the Messiah, the eternal king who would come through David's bloodline and the promised land 
for this physical dimension and for eternity would be realized for Abraham's descendant of the seed which would come through Isaac and ultimately David and the seed being Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. All right. So now that takes care of, of, of um, all of the covenants up to the new blood covenant. So of the eight covenants in God's dealing with man, seven of them are under the old covenant. Now we get over to the new blood covenant. And again, uh, when we look at the number, symbolically eight it represents a new beginning. So we have the old covenant, and now we have a new covenant, a new beginning. Things have changed now. They're not like they were under the old covenant. And so it, this is, uh, gets to bear we, where it gets pretty exciting because now we're getting into where you and I live in the new blood covenant. All right, now, the new blood covenant in Hebrews 13.20. And Hebrews 13.20 says, now may, the God, may, now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. There'll never, ever be another covenant. This is it for eternity. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, the promises of Abraham were made to seed, singular, not plural. One seed. Genesis 17, chapter 17 through 19, chapter 21, and then chapter 26, verse 2 to 5, and Galatians 3:16. Now, secondly, through the New Blood Covenant, Jesus does not replace the Abrahamic Covenant, but he fulfills the Abrahamic Covenant, sealing and ratifying the everlasting covenant with his shed blood. Again, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 20. Now, Jesus fulfills the three promises made to Abraham. One, that God would be the father of many nations, Genesis 17 verse 4. Two, in Abraham, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. Genesis 12 and verse 3. And thirdly, God promised Abraham land. Genesis 12 through 7. So he'd be a great nation. And of course, he would be blessed. And he would be promised the land. Now the prophet Jeremiah speaks concerning the new blood covenant. In Jeremiah 31, 31 chapter 31, verse 31 to 34. And he says there that the new birth or regeneration of the human spirit, he says, I will put my law in their minds and write it in on their hearts. Verse 33 of Jeremiah 31. And then he also said, secondly, through the new blood covenant, I will be their God and they would, I will be their God and they, the house of Israel, will be my people. Jeremiah 31, 33. The personal ministry of the Holy Spirit is what's promised in, in Jeremiah 31, verse 34 where it says they will be taught individually by God. So Jeremiah actually talks about the new birth back here in the Old Covenant. Then fourthly, there's full justification. Their sins will be forgiven and completely removed under the new blood covenant. Not covered, completely removed. Well, I'm sorry. Verse 5. The new blood covenant, see, under the old covenant, through the shed blood of animals, sins could only be covered. They couldn't be remitted, canceled, or removed, or that's it. Only covered. But then when the shed blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God, the ultimate sacrifice, through his blood that was shed at Calvary's cross, sins could be remitted, canceled, never to be remembered again. And I think that's incredible. Because in both in, in Hebrews 10, 17 and, in Je, and, and Jeremiah 31 and um, 34 and in Isaiah 43, verse 25, it says this, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and I will not remember your sins. That's awesome. That's under the new blood covenant. God won't even remember our sins. Hallelujah, man, man, oh man. I can't help but get excited. Well, anyway, our time is up on this session. And I uh, want to encourage you to watch uh, this teaching in its entirety because you can pick up, if you missed any YouTube uh, message, you can still get them. And the videos will be posted on the AFCM International YouTube channel. 
And you can also receive resource items through our website at afcminternational.org. That's AFCM, spell out the word international, dot org. And there you can also download the faith aid with scriptures of God's promises, order books and teaching materials, and sow seed into this ministry. I want to thank you for listening, and please join me again tomorrow at the same time. And may God bless you richly until we meet again.